good morning everyone uh, my name is kuldeep and uh, i have been into the industry of database administration for last around 12 years and for last 7 years i have been working on to mysql and i have been associated with the technology for last one, one year so i have worked on mysql since it was in 5.1 and then we had it 5.5 and then 5.6. I work uh, with major companies like India Tank Shopping, where the database size was quite huge, uh, like 700 gigs, and my city was perfectly okay. Initially, my, my city was not that stable with the previous versions like 5.1, but uh, with 5.5 and 5.6, it has become quite stable. And nowadays, we know that there's a lot of demand for MySQL in the market. So, uh, may I know the names of the attendees? Could you please uh, introduce yourself with one, one, one line as your, your name and uh, your expectation from this session? All right, that's fine. So, uh, we will be starting this uh, demo, demo session. Today during this session, uh, I'm going to tell you what MySQL is, how MySQL is being used in the industry, how it is going, the history of MySQL, the major releases and milestones in the life cycle of MySQL, what are the different features and advantages of MySQL, and after that, if you have some queries, I will certainly address those queries. So, as you all know, that database is an important part of any application, any industry uh, nowadays. So, also, I was running any business, data, um, data reports, the data, and after that, we can get the relevant information to take the important business related decisions. So historically, uh, Oracle and SQL Server were the major database products in the market. But uh, there was a need of something open source where people can use without spending much of the licensing cost. So MySQL has evolved as the most popular open source database. It is very small in size. In general, SQL is known as a structured query language. So, the people who invented, who created MySQL, so they related SQL abbreviation with the name of the product as MySQL. So, why, why, why we should use MySQL? So these are the two points we can go by <coughs> that proves why should one use MySQL. So as I have already said, MySQL is the most popular open source database. There are a couple of other open source databases as well, like you might have heard about PostgreSQL and a couple of more. But you will see that MySQL has in lot of popularity over other open source and other licensed products as well. So we should not call it MySQL, it is MySQL. <coughs> now MySQL has proved its usability and I have said I have already used it in quite huge environments where the database size was in hundreds of GVs. Other points that favors MySQL, it is almost free, much cheaper than Oracle and SQL Server. Like licensing cost is almost nothing. There are when you start using MySQL, there are two types of distributions available. One is the community edition, other is the enterprise edition. So for enterprise edition, we need to pay a small amount of licensing fee to Oracle. 
because now we have all science here. And if you use for non business purpose, means if you are not earning anything, then you can start using the community edition. Then you need not to pay anything for it. Anyone can install MySQL locally. It means MySQL is available for all the platforms Unix, Linux, all the distributions of Linux, Windows, Sun, and all, all, of them, all the possible platforms. So, anytime you can install MySQL, then you can start using it. Easy to use shell for creating tables, query tables. Etc. So that that means that MySQL has got a rich set of tools that you you can you can connect from your command prompt and you can directly start querying your database like your DMLs and DBLs. Easy to use with Java JDBC. MySQL provides its own drivers to connect with different other frameworks languages that you can connect with. Uh, Java, ODBC, you can create OD, ODBC DSM, or you can connect it with PHP. Guys, if you have got any question in between, you can stop me and ask. I'll be really happy to ask and address your queries. Right. So, uh, as far as history goes of MySQL, uh, it was initially owned by a company called AB, owned by David Xmark. And uh, later in 2008, it was owned by, taken over by Sun Microsystems. And before the entire Sun Microsystems was, it was taken over by Oracle Corporation in April 2009. So now Oracle owns MySQL. These are the major releases and milestones. So, first formal release that was <coughs> done for. <coughs> Sorry, MySQL was 3.19 in 1996, 3.20. But MySQL has gained a lot of property, version 5 onwards. It was in March 2005, then version 5.1 in 2008. Since uh, so 5.5 uh, version, it has become very stable. It was released in December 2010. And uh, February 2013, MySQL version, the latest version 5.6 was released. 5.7 is uh, still under in beta phase. It has not made general of under under the general available. Um, Oracle is planning to make it generally available during this uh, year 2015 only. So this this is the share of MySQL uh, among the no SQL and RDBMS technologies are in the market. You might have heard about MongoDB, MariaDB, ExtraDB, PostgreSQL, and CowsDB. So among these, MySQL has the largest share in the market, that is 58%. So as the technology grows, uh, business start using those technologies, and the requirement for the professionals of those technologies increases as well in the market. So I have, we have collected few data uh, from internet. So we saw that there, there was a, a steep rise in the requirement of MySQL. MySQL professionals as compared to other open source databases like Mongo, Postgres SQL, and SQLite. These are the, these are the few major companies we are using MySQL. MySQL. And hence, MySQL has proven its work. So if, you, if you see uh, all the major, major companies, like everybody nowadays is on Facebook, every day billions and trillions of reports and transactions are happening at Facebook. Wikipedia, also everybody knows, LinkedIn is the most popular professional website. NASA, Twitter, Walmart, Verizon. As you see, social media, professional media, e commerce, G, Toshiba, mobile companies, courier companies, logistic companies, IT companies. So, companies from 
all the sectors are using MySQL very efficiently. Why? Right. Now, the features and advantages of MySQL number one, support all major platforms. I have already told you that it supports the distribution is available for all the platforms like if you have Windows, you can install your MySQL on Windows, Linux, all the distributions like Oracle Linux, Red Hat, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu. So MySQL distribution is available for all the platforms and it has got two additions basically. Uh, one is community edition if you want to use it for non business non profit work you can use community edition if you are using it for your business and you are earning something from that business then you will need to buy it from oracle and that will be called the enterprise edition but still the licensing cost is very less as compared to oracle and sql server easy to administer and manage right now if you guys are already aware of two of the databases like SQL Server and Oracle and if I ask you to find out a query that is blocking other sections or queries which are taking time definitely pressure on the resources of the database server it will be a little longer task in those database servers in MySQL, it is very easy to a single command. You can enable the slow query load, you can put the time. Uh, let's say you want to check the queries, you want to log the queries which are taking more than five seconds. So all the queries which will be taking more than five seconds will be logged into that log that is called slow query log, and later on you can analyze those queries and let Development in my application team know that these queries are slow and you can take the diagnostic steps. Open source, it is open source, means if you want to add more functionality to that, you can. A lot of other people are providing their distributions as well, like MariaDB. <coughs> now, I would like to tell you um, that ever since Oracle has taken over some microsystem. So it is now Oracle MySQL. So the people who originally developed MySQL have released their own version of MySQL, their own distribution of MySQL that is known as MariaDB, very, very similar to MySQL. And there's one more company you might have heard of, that we have a new name for you, uh, Fortuna. Fortuna company also has their uh, MySQL distribution that is known as ExtraDB. So all these are, are different different versions of MySQL because it is open source. So you can make some changes, you know, the additions, and you can release your own MySQL as it compliant. To use your database, uh, for transactional purpose, your database should be in. Uh, should support ACID compliance. So all databases like be it Oracle, be it SQL Server, or any other Postgres, MySQL, so databases should be ACID compliant. That means atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So MySQL supports all the ACID properties. It is atomic, it is consistent provides different levels of isolation and it is durable also. Pluggable engines. Right. When we use database systems, we can have the different type of environments. Like the two well-known environments are OLAP and OLTP. OLTP environments are used for transactions, let's say money is involved, so it should be transaction safe. And other environments are like OLAP analytical purpose where we just run the reports, we use our database for reporting purpose, we don't do much transactions. In other database systems like Oracle and SQL Server, we cannot uh, 
I will say, uh, you know, provide the other functionalities. What MySQL has, it has got different type of environments available. For example, if I say I want to make a transactional environment, it gives us InnoDB. In so when I make, when I create the table, I write create table, give the name of the columns and at the end, I give engine is equal to InnoDB. So InnoDB is the environment that gives the asset functionality to the table by which it will be supporting your primary key and foreign key and begin transactions and rollback and comment. Now, if uh, for, for example, if I if I don't want the transaction for the table or uh, I don't want the table to be transaction safe. And my and I think my environment will only be used for select queries or reporting. I will better use another engine, another environment that is known as my ISN. Earlier it was known as ISN. Now in the newer versions like 5.5 and 5.6, it is my ISN. My ISN is not foundation safe. But yes, it is very fast when it comes to the retrieval of data. <coughs> right. Now, similarly, there are other engines also I will cover when we proceed with this section. Host-based security. MySQL gives you host-based security. By creating the user, you can mention the host name with the username. The user will only be able to connect to the database server only if he is trying to connect from the mentioned host by which he was created. If he is not trying from that host, the database server will not allow him to connect. One more functionality MySQL has as far as security is concerned. If from a host somebody tries connecting to database and the attempts of connection fails a number of times, MySQL itself <coughs> blocks that host until the database administrator, administrator unlocks that host, MySQL keeps blocking all the connections coming from that host. HK technology, high availability. All the, all the RDBMS provides some kind of higher liberty attacks. Similarly, MySQL, MySQL also gives high availability attack. Any questions, anything is stopping. So this is the architecture of MySQL. You know, if you see, uh, there are different layers. First, the first layer, this is the application layer by which the connections are coming to MySQL server. This is the MySQL instance. First is the connection pool where when a connection comes to the database server, first of all, it authenticates whether the user has the permissions of valid user or valid host. After that, there's a, there's a thread pool also. And if the connection is already available, so it need not to create all those things for the connection. Connection limit, if the connection is, uh, number of connections are reaching the max number of connections. Check memory caches and X, all, all those things at this level. Parser, the optimizer, caches and buffers, everything. Like parser is means uh, it checks uh, your query for if it is syntactically right. And uh, after that, after the syntax, it checks whether the requester has got privileges on the object he has requested. And if those objects actually available in the in the in the database, if all these things are correct, then it optimizes the query. You might have heard about optimizers if you are already available, already. Uh, know about Oracle or SQL Server. So 
the server creates a path by which it can get the fastest data access or it can retrieve the fastest way of data and various buffers and caches are also available at this layer only caches and buffers like in uh, Oracle you have LGA and other things in MySQL also we have AWDB buffer cache or C cache or um, query query cache so to, to make, make, make the database retrieval faster and make the IO efficient so the next next layer is pluggable engines in the in the previous slide I told you that MySQL supports different kind of environment that is available in the form of pluggable engines so whichever environment you need for that you can use these pluggable engines these pluggable engines are customized for data retrieval transaction support or uh, your uh, efficient use of memory reduce IOs <coughs> all those things now I will cover a few details about those like uh, MySM MySM is used for reporting purpose it has less number of blocking and it is not transaction safe but uh, when, you, when you query your data it is very fast the data retrieval is very fast InnoDB InnoDB is transaction safe engine you can use it for transaction it supports begin run rollback commit supports primary key and foreign key relationships and other validations also it supports next is NDB uh, you might have heard about about MySQL cluster so NDB is the engine which is used in MySQL cluster <coughs> So while creating the table and if you have installed MySQL cluster, if the table engine is NDB, then only the cluster comes into picture. That means then only the table will be replicated to other cluster. Now, likewise, the, there are so many engines available in MySQL. <coughs> Like uh, one more is a federated. Federated Federate is a, uh, is an engine means if you want to have a remote representation of a table. Uh, let's take an example. You have a server at remote location, and every time you have to make a connection to connect to that server, there is a table that is useful for you. What you will do? If you will create a local MySQL instance at your machine. And you will create that table with federated engine at the main server. You will create a remote representation with the connection details of that server on your local server. Then, in future, if you want to use that table, you will be using it as if it is locally available at your server. You will need to make the connection every time to the remote server. Memory. Memory engine is if you want to put the entire table into memory into the into the RAM, then you can create the table with memory engine, and then the whole table will fit into memory, so that the data retrieval will be very very. Now after this pluggable store engine layer, there's a file file system jobs, this physical physical file. Now in in my SQL we have <coughs> global table space, space files and local, local table files and different kind of blocks in oracle you have alert log to monitor any problem any error at oracle instance in mysql we have error error log not the alert, alert log so error log contains all the errors occurred at MySQL instance limit and uh, if any problem any error comes any restarts stops starts anything that happens at instance level is logged into error log we have the slow query log slow query log 
as I told you earlier, you know, if you want to log, if you want to monitor your slow queries, you can enable the slow query and you can tell your MySQL means by what time you want to log the slow queries. Means if any if you want any query that is taking beyond two seconds or three seconds or five seconds should be logged into slow query log so you can mention that time all the queries which are taking beyond that will be logged into slow query log okay now another another log is binary bin log or the binary log to create replication or to create any higher availability or you want point in time restoration of your database then you need to enable the binary log binary log is equivalent to archive logging in Oracle and uh, binary log is also important for replication. If you look more into detail of uh, files, files at the file system of MySQL server, we have global table space, those global data files, global global logs. So we have IBD files and IBD log. By default there are two IBD files and two IBD logs. Like we have data file, data file in Oracle and Rudo logs. So by default we have two logs, but if we want we can we can, we can have multiple number of logs, uh, logs. Then we need to customize this and we need to put the entry into configuration file. Likewise, you have ST file in Oracle. So we will just put, put the entry into configuration file that is known as my.cnf that by default reside in etc folder of Linux. You just put out those entries and you restart your system, your new log files will be created. So these are the different engines we have just for HA techniques, high availability techniques. So this is one of the most important topics in MySQL journey. In all the RDBM systems, all the technologies of database, we have high availability techniques. So this is just to overcome the disasters, like right? we are running a production system and something happens like hardware crashes, power failure, or by mistake, <coughs> data deletion, data corruption, or something like that. So we need to have a system side by to which the application can immediately connect and the entire production does not tempo. The first thing is replication. In the replication system, we have a master and the slave. Master, you can think as a primary system, slave as a secondary system. So whatever updates happen at the master, those changes are written to the binary log that we have discussed in the previous slide. Slave catches those updates from the binary log and those changes are written with few threads running at the slave's logo in the form of SQL query. Yes, uh, there are <coughs> chances that your slave might break, but there are tools, there are techniques you can always Keep monitoring your slave, and <clears throat> in the case of disaster, your application will start connecting to your slave, and your production will not tamper. The other technology is NDP cluster. This is altogether different from the application. The binaries, uh, the distribution of MySQL for NDP cluster is entirely different. Is the normal MySQL Distribution does not work for NDB cluster. <coughs> NDB cluster is very much different from traditional clusters. Uh, if we talk about any of the clusters, any of the cluster like OS cluster, Linux, Windows, SQL Server cluster, or Oracle cluster, these are shared clusters. Uh, now, for for example, if we take an uh, SQL Server example. So there will be two separate instances running uh, SQL Server 
And then there's a shared drive here, SAM, NFS, or anything. Data is written onto that shared disk, and active passive nodes are accessing that data from the shared disk. If one node goes down, another node <coughs> immediately comes up and start reading that, reading, utilizing data. Start utilizing that data from that shared shared mount, and that's how the cluster uh, is known as high availability packet. Now, how NDB cluster is different from traditional clusters? In NDB cluster, nothing is shared. It is known sharing basis. <coughs> there are different SQL binaries. There are different data nodes. Yes. If one data node goes down, another your uh, MySQL instance will start using the another data data node. There is no limit of having data nodes and uh, SQL nodes. You can have n number of data nodes, n number of SQL nodes. There's one management node also in Quark that manages all these data nodes and your MySQL MySQL nodes from your Management node, you can take backup, you can start, stop, or you can introduce a new data node and SQL node. So everything is controlled from management node. Galera cluster. Now, Galera cluster is the proprietary cluster from Pacona. It is it is it is little different from NDB cluster, but it is it is said to be more reliable than NDB, NDB cluster. We will, uh, later on, we will cover more details on Galera cluster if somebody is interested. DRBD is another form of replication, basically. It is a disk based replication. Means we have two separate instances of MySQL. And if we configure DRBD, means if we, if we, if the replication happens at the block level, this block level. If any data changes happen, so that particular block is replicated to the another node. So it happens at OS level. MySQL Graphical Tools is uh, all in all MySQL is command based and, uh, used. Apart from Windows, if you install it on any of the operating system like Linux, Unix, Solaris, MySQL is entirely command based. But if you want to have a graphical based interface for MySQL that is known as MySQL Workbench, freely download, downloadable from MySQL.com. So it is it is a very very useful tool. You can write queries, you can take backups, you can check server health, you can create users, or uh, you can start, stop, you can change the configuration of your dataset server. Means all in all, you can do everything from this. <coughs> As we all know, some of the other things about the database. So everybody might be knowing that backup is the most important part of any database system. So, like Oracle has different techniques of database. Means you have old backup, you have old backup. For better, you can you use RMAN or you use export techniques to take this data logical backup and create some files. Likewise, MySQL also supports old backup and old backup. Old backup, we need to shut down the entire system. We take the backup at the files level. We can copy those files onto another system, restore those, and we are good to go. But in the practical scenarios, we are never allowed to be the development system or any production or any testing. We are not allowed, DBS are not allowed to shut down the system. So we have to have techniques for all the terms. Right. So MySQL dump uh, is the command, is the tool that is bundled with MySQL binaries by which we can take the MySQL. My, MySQL dump is quite similar to the export command that you use in Oracle. It creates a set of commands when you take backup for MySQL dump. It takes 
it creates a set of commands like create, insert, all, the, all those commands. It writes into the file, and when you restore uh, that, uh, that file, MySQL executes those set of files while restoring. So, all your inserts and creates are executed sequence, sequentially as those are written in that backup file. MySQL dump, through MySQL dump, you can take the backup of all the databases, any specific database, any specific table, but MySQL dump is suitable for small databases. Let's say I have a tiny database, so I can take I can take a take a dump. My backup file will be of around let's say 500 MB or 1, 1 GB. But while I while while I will restore, so it may it may take uh, let's say uh, one hour depending upon the server resources. If the server is very good, it has a lot of RAM. Let's say server has good 10 gigs of RAM, so it might be faster. But in case of, in in the times of disasters when the things need to be really fast, my SQL dump is not that fast. So there are third-party tools available, and uh, Oracle has its own tool, MySQL, uh, MySQL Enterprise Backup, and there's one more tool, Extra Backup from Performa. So these tools are very much fast as compared to MySQL dump. MySQL dump takes the logical backup, writes, create and insert command into your file. On the other hand, MySQL Enterprise Backup and <coughs> Extra Backup takes file level backup. These are also hot backups. We need not to shut down the instance. But these tools takes the backup of files put it in a backup folder, take the log backup as well, means from the point they start taking the backup till the end time of backup, they put all the transaction into a log and at the end of the backup they apply those transactions onto the files they have already backed up to make it consistent. <coughs> now as far as restoration comes, these tools for enterprise backup and extra backup, copy those files onto another server and you are good to go. So the restoration time is only the copying time of the files onto other onto other 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 server. Whereas MySQL dump creates all the objects in the database when you restore it. So it is considerably slow when you compare it with MySQL Enterprise Backup and Extra Backup. Right, let's move on to another slide. Right, so if you guys have any questions, you can ask me.